family. We'd also like to acknowledge the broader families of Bikoli and Sipoyo and Majola and Marizela, friends, colleagues, associates, comrades of the family, those that can't be here with us physically, um, that are watching online, welcome. I'm Kathy and I'll be your MC along with Kimo. Good evening. Sorry, good evening. Uh, my name is Kimu Busielo. Uh, together with my dearest friend Kathy, we will be guiding tonight's commemorations. Um, I'd like to start by saying that I can't imagine the pain and the torment that the family are going through as they navigate this inconceivable loss. And so we are all the more grateful that you've opened up your home and opened up your hearts to allow us to mourn with you. We will begin with an opening prayer from Reverend Reverend Lengwe. Let us pray. Holy Father, make us holy. Holy Jesus, make us holy. Holy Spirit, make us holy. Father, we thank you this evening for the gift of life, for your blessings, for your mercies, for your love, for your protection. Father, we are here with this family as you call one of them to rest. Father, we lift up our hands unto your throne those are your names that our forefathers used to call you with. We are standing here, Father. We ask you to comfort each and every one who is close to this family especially the father, the mother, and the siblings. Go and go see who parked and doing his own. As in Bonanga, which is often an hour. And there's no one God who qualifies you to be God. That's why we are standing here this evening. So sit we now, we enjoy it, we enjoy it. Umbrella and go see, and you are such a special God. Is it those are special? You don't consult because you rule according to theocracy. That's why, Father, we just accept whatever decision you take for our lives because you created us in your own image. That's why we are so grateful and happy when you call us unto your heavenly church. We believe that God Pumlani is also, also joining the church that is already triumphal whilst we are still in the militant church. Father, I ask you to comfort everyone, especially those who will be sharing moments with this day. And say as go to Wenangosi, Zeninze Zindabazas Kuluma Abandungai. They will remember each and every moment that they spent with him. And yet, they go to Gulungule. This is Kati. This is Kati. So go to see the command. See, 
zakuti kubeli na kuzuguse kama la kijamii. Kwa Yesu Kristu kuse tu, who died and rose for us, now forever more. Amen. The Lord be with you. I greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We get our scripture reading from Paul's letter to the church in Rome, Romans chapter 14, we read verses 7 to 9. For none of us lives for ourselves alone. And none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So, whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living, the word of the Lord. Nusapo la kwa pikoli, chwaka na manguni kwa njibamba gase, batimu, sobo, nezalamane, now, among the Abandu, we have joined this memorial service virtually in the Angulis. City to do it. I will sing a long video. Emela, you go bele, the Sanjeli. You will take your own digile yo. You go away, no tabatile yo. Since it's now Ubu Minji, since I said, since I Ika maliko sike maliko ongwe. Kuba, nukuba siti sike ubo umi. Sibotela inkuhusi. Nukuba siti sife, sifela inkuhusi. Koko oke, nukuba siti sike ubo umi. Nukuba siti sife, sinabi inkuhusi. Another translation puts it like this. My light is not bright enough. Whether we live or die, it must be for the Lord. Alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. For God, whether we are alive or dead, doesn't make any difference. It's just a transition. It's like moving from one room to another, or from one city to another, or from one province to another. Actually, it is the same with us Africans. Because we believe that when people die, become ancestors. They transition to the spiritual life. Hence, when we bury a human being, we usually say, we are begwa, or we are fishwa. We hide them. Meaning they are still present, but are hidden from our sight. Even the Bible says, by faith the dead still speak, even though they are dead. Naka ephilenji usatet, Romans 11.4. We believe that our ancestors by nature and by grace are close to us and minister in a special ways to our needs. Can I have my phone please? I need light. Of course, for us human beings, 
it is very difficult to understand this and mine please I won't be able to operate this. Sorry, I can't see. Of course, for human beings, it is very difficult to understand because death literally robs us of the loved ones. We won't see Pumlani again with our naked eyes. We won't hug him or look at him affectionately the Bible describes death as an enemy. The last, en the last enemy to be destroyed is death. For believers, death is a friend insofar as it takes us to the presence of Christ. But insofar as it is still combined with too much suffering, it remains the last enemy that must be destroyed. In Romans 3.38, Paul had already written that neither life nor death could separate believers from the Lord. Again, in this passage, the, th the same thought is presented. Because of Christ, because Christ conquered death, we are called conquerors by Paul and he says yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us all these things include life and death and everything in between because Paul himself endured suffering constantly and was living in constant danger whether we live or die we belong to the Lord means not only that we die in God's perfect timing, but also that we will continue to belong to the Lord after we died and enter eternity. We will ever and always belong to the Lord. However, Christian freedom is not a license to do whatever we want, the way we want. Our choices and freedom should still be guided by submission to God. My prayer for Pumlani is that he can inherit internal joy where he, there will be no more sorrow, no more pain, no more suffering, and no more death. As Sule Utiko, Zonge Nyembe is a mission act. Nabisa Diko Kufa, Nabisa Diko Nastrili, Nakala, Nantungu, Kuba is those of Kala, Zizul. In conclusion, Lusapo, Lawa Pikoli, no matter how severe your pain is, you should never assume God is not listening or doesn't care. Tembelani gui, your melela kalipe is your aim. We should learn to trust in God even in the midst of our sufferings. Nale imeko nikuyo yeshuula. Times of darkness and despair will not last forever. Tembelani ku Yesu. Ukuba ufumaneka lunceto kwawo bathembele kuye. Amen. Thank you, Reverence, for opening up tonight's proceedings. We are here tonight to honor the life of Pumlani Bigoli. Pumlani blazed through Pretoria and Cape Town by means of Willow Ridge and UCT. He went on to become a multidisciplinary artist in the truest sense of the word. An award-winning author, a playwright, a filmmaker, he converted his book of short stories into an incredible exhibition, self-taught, self-motivated, a true rock and tour. Kathy, we'll say a few words. Thank you, Kiva. Nani has been one of my closest friends since we met in 2007. 
and like a lot of people that are from Nani Springs now, the story of how we met is a bit of a funny one, um, but I won't get into it tonight. Um, for me, Pumlani was more than a friend to me. He was like a sibling. But more like that irritating sibling that you get as a lost born, that you never asked your parents for, but that you grow to completely love and cannot even imagine life without. That was Pumlani for me, with a lot of emphasis on the very irritating. <laughs> um, it's very difficult for me to stand here today because I actually had never contemplated this day would come especially so soon and I'm sure a lot of you feel the same um, but here we are I personally feel like this is still not happening um, and I think a lot of us are in the same space so hopefully by being here to celebrate Poblani, Pumi Hawks aka the Black Peter Bruce as he used to refer to himself, we can leave with some sort of closure that we can take with us and lean on when this finally sinks in. We can never understand why people are taken from us, so all we can do is try to focus on how blessed we are to have crossed paths with those people, and that's what we're here to do this evening, to share our beautiful memories and stories about how Pumlani impacted each of our lives and to remember him as the funny, thought-provoking, brilliant, big-hearted, often outrageous and highly inappropriate friend, brother, son, colleague that we came to love, knowing that no one can ever feel this hole in our lives and hoping that wherever he is, he has that silly, up-to-no-good grin across his face and most importantly, that he's at peace. I unfortunately have not had the pleasure of meeting everyone here, so I will just give a brief history as to who I am to Pumlani and who he was to me. I met Pumlani when we were about 16 or 17. I would love to say that our bond was forged immediately, but the truth is that I don't think we liked each other very much. It took us a while to grow into our friendship, but when we grew, oh man, we grew. Pumlani became a brother to me. I've really been struggling to, to find words for this loss. Pumlani gave us so many beautiful words, but in his passing, it feels like he took all of mine with him. So I would just like to leave you with this. Pumlani had an unreal and sometimes eerie ability to do three things. To make you laugh, to make you cry, and to make you dream. And I hope that as we mourn together, as we grieve together, as we celebrate his life, we allow ourselves to be gentle enough to continue to laugh, to continue to cry, and to continue to dream. I would like to bring to the floor our first speaker for today, um, a cousin from the Bigolis, uh, Spusi Somagoni. And there really isn't a place where to start because 
It's one of those characters that, that had no beginning, it had no ending. It was the true blazer amongst our lives that lit the fire within all of us. As our MCs have already said so. So to start it off, I think I will just say to the families that say not in grief he is no more, but in thankfulness that he was. Um, as uh, you've heard, I'm speaking as a cousin uh, growing up in the dusty streets of New Brighton, Mendy Road. There were, I think, six of us as boys there. Uh, Opumlani, Solomz, and myself, Utuso, standing over there. Um, it's a pity Umbu, Usi, and Umbumzi aren't here yet. Uh, they'll be arriving tomorrow. So you can just imagine the chaos that six young boys will break in your house. But um, we managed to not get into much trouble because our grandfathers did not spare the rod, as everyone else knows around here. So um, we grew up uh, in that Mendy Road. They were coming in for holidays. Um, I'm a permanent resident there, and it would always be good times when we were together, either in Mendy Zanzi or over in Mendy Pezulu, where I, where I stay. Uh, Pumlani was still working. Okay. Um, Pumlani, he wasn't always the most vocal amongst us as we grew up, but uh, you know he had his ways of showing us love, and uh, it's that love that I think that brings us all here today. You know, and some of the fondest memories that uh, I have growing up were being in Mendezansi, in the back room playing PlayStation, where the Pumlan in the solo taught me how to play Tony Hawks, and. I think that is where their love for skating came from, by playing the game on the PlayStation. And then, um, obviously, uh, we grew up and, uh, you know, we, we kind of went our separate ways, in a way, in life. Um, as we all know, Pumlani was never good with keeping phones. It is something that he was always losing. Um, and at some point, I think I had about six or seven numbers of his on my phone. But yeah, um, we went on to varsity and, uh, you know, we, we would hook up, we would meet up. And uh, those are stories for other days that uh, we used to sit and laugh about uh, as, you know, we'd call ourselves these sort of um, ungrown up children at the age that we are right now. And uh, if there was a love that we, we managed to share amongst us, it was the love for rugby, uh, which is why you'll see me wearing an all black t-shirt because that is the one team that, you know, we would always um, yeah, root for. That uh, when it comes to the Crusaders and the All Blacks, best not cheeky up. Pumland is probably the only person I could lament and celebrate a Crusaders loss with at the same time because one of our biggest arguments was who's supposed to be starting at a fly off for the All Blacks? Is it Richie Mawungo with Beard and Barrett? And, uh, he was always for Richie Mawunga and I'm always for Beard and Barrett, and which is still like that. So wherever you are, Pumlani, uh, Beard and Barrett is still the better flyer of my friend. <laughs> so yeah, um, you know, as, the, as, we, as we grew up and, uh, you know, we found a common love uh, within the media spaces, I uh, in the radio and TV space, and as you've heard, you know, he was, you know, multidisciplinary when it came to books on the stage. Um, the radio as well and everything and that's uh, something that we shared and something that we spoke about quite often and I think what brought me to tears the most was a project that we had been speaking about for, for quite a while and we actually never got it off the ground and what's even sadder is that it was only a couple of weeks ago when I began to get things into motion about that project where we would write a book, we would record a documentary about a subject that we were both so passionate about, which is rugby. What I will say um, today that Pomlani left a legacy, left a legacy of love, left a legacy of selflessness. Whenever we spoke, we'd always end the question, we'd end the, the conversation with I love you, and it would be, I love you too, man. So wherever you are, brother, I just want you to know that your pain was definitely mightier than the sword. 
which is evident by the number of people who are here today who in some other way have been touched by your presence in their lives. So I think that's all, all that's left to say would be, oh, go rest, brother. And I hope wherever you are, you're in peace from a world that could have never hoped to understand you. Rest, Scouty. Rest, Mr. Slick. Sorry, James is not here yet, so we will move to a school friend, Katleho Malachi. family, uh, friends, relatives, uh, to the men of God. Uh, I'm going to try and keep this short and light. Uh, if I didn't keep it light, I can just hear Pumlani in his made up Sibedi saying, oh, and then when I'm on um, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm wearing this jersey in his honor or if I'm just wearing it to hide my mkawa but I'm wearing it um, I met Pumlan in primary school uh, and it was somewhat distant um, when the same grade as Usolomzi um, and when I moved over to Willow Ridge High School we sort of hung out in the same hip hop rap circles when he still went by slick tongue um and in grade nine we then caught up grades and uh forged somewhat of a friendship i wasn't certain how serious this friendship was until uh Pumlani confided in me about being in love with a certain mashwake. Uh, now those of you who went to school with us would appreciate that number one, confessing to being in love was a bit of a social risk and you could only confide that in somebody you trusted and I took that as a, as a, as a vote of confidence, barring the fact that I was confused that Upumlani was in love with a black girl. <laughs> um, I didn't take him serious for the first couple of days, but I, I soon came to realize what no man is serious, le chap. Uh, and so we, we had to try something. And try we did. Um, and we failed. But we tried. And in that trying and in that period of building and forming this friendship, I came to learn a couple of things about Upumlani. I came to learn about his conviction, uh, about his passion for his convictions, about his humility, uh, because said, no, no, we can't do that, no, no, we can't do that, no, let's try it this way. So, but above all, I came to learn about his love, his loving nature. And over the years, moving past that incident, we went on to share 
love for a number of things. Um, love for sports, love for public speaking, debating, politics, drama, more debating, the All Blacks, more debating, um, history, where we eventually went to place first and second, respectively, in matric, and a love for people when we served together on the peer support group, which is a role that I think Pumlani took more serious than any role he would have taken as a student leader or a sportsman on the field. The duty, the responsibility, the, the ability and opportunity to care for others in that peer support group role. Pumlani not only loved people, but he was loved by people. Um, and this would have been evidenced by his ability to, in the morning, be hanging with the Owens, getting up to mischief at break time, hanging with Majita, watching them play soccer, second break, hanging with Abelungu, talking about whatever they talk about. And his ability in, in a time in a time like that where we were so racially concentrated in our social circles to be able to cross those boundaries with ease was not only telling of his love for people but how lovable he was to people. And over time as we finished school the most constant and consistent love became a love for one another in Pumlani's ability to always stay in touch, to always forgive and an ability to stay in touch. And yeah, growing up, you came to realize, you know, Pumlani shared a lot of his love with people. Um, he loved his family deeply. He loved his parents, he loved his siblings. And in his love for people, he was open enough to share and open up his home to us, to open up his family and share his family with us, and likewise his family to share him with us, made us feel at home, uh, exhibited such a great humility in constantly reminding us that a man is not to be loved or judged based on his material disposition but on the merit of his character. There was an opportunity to have gone a very different route growing up in the space that we grew up with, but Pumlani never delved into any of that. He treated people as people and loved them equally. Um, I want to thank Tata, thank Umama, Zugiswa Solomzi, for sharing Pumlani with us. Everybody's got a very peculiar and unique experience of Pumlani. He meant a lot to people on an intimate level because that is the level of attention to detail that his love had. It was not performative, it was not for exhibition, it was for impact. Um, we hope to continue to share that love with you. We still consider ourselves a part of the family. Uh, Tata, if you are willing to cook that meat that you would cook when the All Blacks were about to wallop the spring box, I am committed to cooking the pub and sharing the controversial views that Pumlani would have shared in commentary during those games. Our memories will range from walking like nomads all over Pretoria as though we didn't have access to transport to Pumlani beaming at his final book launch last year and sharing such big dreams, hopes and plans for the future. And, you know, one, one, one of the founders that he kept speaking about was a movie based on this very city, which he loved in his own peculiar way. And as such, I'd just like to encourage us in honor of Pumlani's memory to remember those characteristics that he possessed and to carry them in our lives 
humility, perseverance, conviction, and love. Now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Let there be love shed among us, and may his soul rest in peace. Thank you, Katecha, for those beautiful words. We'll now call the neighborhood friend, Bobo Daman. Good evening, everyone, friends, family, uh, colleagues. I wasn't sure whether I wanted to just speak on my experiences, you know, in the neighborhood growing up with the Pumlani. Um, so I just decided just to write a letter. And um, the name of the letter is Letter to My Neighborhood Brother. In the beginning, you were like a younger brother I didn't have. And in later years, we became more like homeboys beyond the little brotherhood. The fondest memories, the fondest memories I have was when we used to have freestyle sessions and just for fun and as a pastime. Even though I wasn't the, the very best at it, you made, you made it more fun and it was just really fascinating just watching you make the English language your concubine. As time went by, we grew older, life got a bit tougher, but we still kept the, we, we still, I'm oh, sorry, we still kept the enjoy life and not take it too seriously mindset. You taught me that true creativity comes from just being yourself. Instead of using your own imagination, to create ideas that don't reflect what you're about. I wish we had more time, I wish I had more opportunities to work together. And I wish that I came to see you when you reached out upon your return from Bermuda, which I still need closure on. I know one thing for sure though, is that you gave the world everything you had within you and the world wanted to take more from you that you could give the world, the world wanted to take more from you that you couldn't give anymore the world just lost a real brother may god grant you the highest level of paradise in heaven Um, we arrived just on time. We're stuck on traffic all the way from Joburg. Um, so, Pickles, Pickles Bicoli, um is what we called him in the newsroom at EWN in 702, um, which is where we met. Um, <laughs> and uh, ooh, Pickles became my friend from the very first day that, uh, that he and I met. And he really chose me. And I think we were both kind of uh, people who didn't really belong in that space at Prime Media. Um, and I think, yeah, the thing about Pickles that was really unique was that he made everyone 
in his life uh, really feel seen, like he saw you, you know? Um, and so, yeah, we became friends. The very first day we met, we were stuck in a really hot car with like no air conditioning, the windows weren't working. We had to drive out to the outskirts of um, Gauteng. And uh, that was our first date, essentially, at Labangani. And uh, since then, um, Pickles and I have been partners in Umsebenzi and in creativity, just, uh, yeah, throughout. And so even after we, we left Prime Media, um, where we, yeah, where we both felt like we didn't belong, and so we needed to find uh, the thing that was meant for us, because we knew that uh, we wanted to be creatively expressive, but it wasn't the space for us. And I think uh, Pickles really encouraged me to find find out what that was, right? And I encouraged him to do the same. And so after we'd left Prime Media, um, and you know how you leave Umsebenzi, I don't know how it is for you guys, but usually you leave Umsebenzi and the people that you worked with, you leave behind. Pickles wouldn't let me leave him behind. <laughs> Um, so I'd moved on, I moved on first and he would reach out consistently just being like, yo, these are my thoughts, this is what I'm thinking, what do you think? And I think um, just him pursuing me in friendship, uh, like uh, even after we had moved on from Prime Media, really reassured me that um, what he saw in me when we were there was so, like he meant it. Um, and so when he would reach out to me randomly being like, uh, oh, friend, he has a PDF of this book I've written. What do you mean you wrote a book? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I wrote a book and uh, I want to turn it into, you know, like a multimedia uh, series of work. I don't want it to just be a book. Okay, Mgani, uh, like let's meet up for coffee and discuss, see his way. And like he was really persistent about just making sure that uh, the things that existed in our minds were brought into the world. Uh, Pumlani was a creative's creative and uh, I know that because why it's hand. He loved, uh, that he loved everyone that he um, encountered really, really well. And um, when Pickles chose you, Pickles chose you. You know, there was no second guessing. Um, there was no kind of uh, question about it. And so even bringing me, kind of a work friend, into his world and to meet Abang Anbak and his people, uh, there was no question about it. So it wasn't a nine to five friendship or a, a Monday to Friday friendship. It was a friendship that, yeah, that was uh, real. Um, and it was a friendship that we built over the years. And so when he was working on Born Freeloaders, when I was working on like various creative projects, just uh, there was a consistency um, in his love. Um, there was a consistency um, in the way that he chose to see magic in something before it came out and was a real thing in the world. Um, and it, it, it's something that was really, really special about him. And I think the, ah, man, I'm really, yeah. The, the one thing that I'm going to, like, I can't believe is never, never going to happen again is uh, Pickles is never going to send me a message being like, hey, friend, I have this idea. Let's find a way to, you know, get funding and get paid for having fun. Because we used to have a lot of fun. Um, we used to get into a lot of trouble as well from Prime Media days when... We like we pitched John Robbie. It's the one time we pitched John Robbie on this concept that we'd worked on overnight. So we literally stayed up all night. John Robbie came in at 3 a.m. and Pickles was like to me, "You have a good relationship with him." So I was like, "Okay, cool, friend. Uh, let's see." And I pitched John Robbie, and John Robbie was like, "Ah, oh, Bubs, Pumlani, love it." And uh, it went live. And we got into trouble because we hadn't gotten like the work approved by either of our bosses and so they heard this on the radio coming into work just being like what <laughs> oh man we stayed getting into trouble and so like that was the one time and just i think with each project that we worked on it was us like getting into good trouble right because when you're creating things um it's okay to apologize later like the thing will work out and so we often did a lot of apologizing later, even with the exhibition that we, that we did last year. Um, so that was the last big project that kind of went live that we'd worked on together. And um, the exhibition went live, but can I tell you what? Like, and I don't know if Anne is here. <laughs> so three days before, the, like, um, kind of some of the key pieces of art had meant to like, arrive, and we hadn't heard from one of the artists. I won't mention the person by name, because he might be here as well. He's a friend of Pumlani's or they're a friend of Pumlanis for ambiguity. Um, but three days before, I think it was three, day, three days before, no art, nothing. Asazi, when things are coming, Anna's stressed, 
she's calling pickles he's not agapenduni calling me uh, <laughs> so I have to now answer. Uh, have you heard from Bomlani? What's happening? Hey, and like everything is in order. We've heard from Usban Skamba Mangamanj. Uh, we've heard from Usban Bani. Everything will be amazing. It will be sorted. And Nang Bella, when the day arrived and the exhibition came, I mean, most of you that were, are here were there. Um, and everything went so smoothly. It was as if, you know, like there had never been any kind of hiccup. But I mean, even when I arrived, I think it was the morning of or the, the, the day before, I, as someone who was part of it, was like, yo, <laughs> it's happening, you know? Um, and we high-fived and he'd been WhatsApping. we just been like, okay, things are coming. Zieza, zieza. How are things running up on your side? And just... um. The ability to uh, see the thing before the thing, you know, was a real thing for everyone else to appreciate was something that was really unique to him. Because even with Born Free Loaders, he was like to me, cool friend, I actually want to do something bigger. I want to uh, I, I write um, something that, like, you know, wasn't written um, while I was in a mental institution. I want to show that I can do this for real. Okay, like everyone believes that you're an author though, you know, there's no doubt about that. But just the determination of, no, um, I have these characters, I have these people, and I want to bring them into the world. And uh, when I got the PDF a few months later of the book, just being like, oh, hey, by the way, I'm begging and what? It's real, it's in the world. And that's just something that Pickles did time and time and time again and I think what was really important throughout our careers because our careers were kind of like we were intertwined even though we were working separately um, throughout our careers he had the ability to um, make people believe um, in the thing that he was working on it's something that was yeah it's just it was him right and the reason that he could make people believe was because he sold whatever it is that he was selling to you from a place of love um, and so there was no way to doubt that actually in Yamte and Balomundo, I believe that this person, um, it's not just about saying who, being who he said he was, because he, I think he was raised with great integrity. I've met his siblings, and you guys are, you guys are the same, even though you're different. Um, and so one thing that about Pumlani was he wasn't just who he said he was, he also did what he said he would do. Um, and that's something I'm really, really good. It's something I'm really, really going to miss because it was, um, it was a unique thing. He brought, um, he brought a unique, he brought his own unique um, flavor, I'll use that word, um, to the world and to the lives of everyone um, that he loved. And so I think um, one thing that we can all do, no me seko, because I got seko. Sorry. One thing that we can all do is, um, is to um, show up in the world and be who we say we are because um, Pumlani was consistent um, so no matter where I encountered him whether it was with his rugby friends <laughs> or with um, <laughs> with Abo Noelen um, or like out on the streets of Joburg or in the newsroom Emsa Benzini he was exactly the same person um, and that's uh, yeah that's a that's not something that you find often, um, especially with our generation. And so, yes, he was very talented, but he also loved, loved. He loved, um, he loved us all very well, and he loved us all so much. And uh, he, I keep on saying this, is Pumlani was the best of us. And uh, we might have lost the best of us, but we have a piece of him. And uh, the thing that I am committing to doing is to uh, uh, taking that into the world and loving with as much integrity and consistency um, as he did. Thank you. Thank you, Baba Lo. Um, yeah, those words are really moving. Uh, you know, when you felt Pumlani's love, you felt it. Um, there's a slight change to the program. Uh, I'm a stickler for protocol, but when the love of Pumlani's life says she wants to say some words, who am I to stand in the way? So, Kiara Griha, it was yours.
Pamlani was the most magical person I've ever met. He put forward a strong, brave, and often quarrelsome face to the world. But deep down, for the people who knew him best, he was the most soft-hearted, empathetic, and kind person that I knew. He cared so deeply for his friends and his family, and loved those close to him with complete abandon. He had an entirely unique way of viewing the world, which was beautiful, and which we were lucky enough for him to share with us in his work and in his writing. He was devilishly handsome, but always shyly dismissed it whenever I told him so. He was brave. There were things that he struggled with, but he was strong and was constantly working on himself, and always made time to be there for those around him. I loved him so very much. Sometimes the brightest and the most beautiful among us are only meant to be with us for a short time when we are privileged enough to get to bask in the intensity and magic and wonder. I wanted to have a long life with Pamlani. There was so much that we were still meant to do. He was undeniably the love of my life. I can only take comfort in the fact that he knew how very deeply he was loved and that wherever he is now, he's at peace. Um, we're going to have two of Pomlani's close friends come and speak, uh, Tandi Steenkamp and Andy Lembete. Good evening and thanks for coming. It's beautiful to see all the people that Pumlani has touched and been part of their lives gather here and all around the world watching. It's been overwhelming to realize the extent of his reach that he's had in such a short lifetime. This is just testament to what a phenomenal person Pumlani was. As Matteo wrote, his superpower was making everyone feel incredibly close to him, however infrequently you saw or spoke to him. I know I'm also usually the one that talks a lot, when Fuzzy asked me to speak today, I didn't know where to begin, because there are just no words. How do you quantify a force like Pumlani in just words? I don't even think he himself, as the amazing writer he was, could do it any justice. I thought I might tell a funny story or memory, but there were just too many. If anyone that put Timber once said, if anyone that ever knew him told him just one, told just one first funny Pumlani story, we'd be here for weeks. So it feels impossible to stand here in front of you and describe who Pumlani was to me, because to each of us he was different, and also so unapologetically himself. He gave a different piece of his heart to every person he met, and every person he knew he loved so, so, so dearly. I'm just grateful that I got even a small part of it. And in death, I know we'll carry him in our hearts forever. Just all his magic. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello everyone, um, my name is Andy Lemete. Um, so yeah, the task of talking about Pumalini Bigodi, where do you begin? Um, so for me, my journey with Pumalini really starts before me and him actually even met, before we even friends through our family. And in many ways, me and him spoke about it a lot. We felt like it was a predestined thing that we were going to have this bond. Um, but I think, given this moment, I just wanted to talk about my journey with the guy. It's, you know, we first met through our mutual friends in university. And the first time I remember, I'll never forget seeing this guy walk into this room with this energy and this charisma, just talking about rap music all the time. And I was like, 
This guy is the best person I've ever met. Wow, he dresses terribly. You know? And kind of from there became this journey that we had. And I think we all know we all had different bonds with Lenny. But you know, one thing, and I'll tell one, one or two stories with, with, about, with you guys, is that when me and Pumani really bonded is that we love the scheme. Anything or any opportunity we can stick it to the man and make money, we're going to do that. So, uh, one story we have is once when me and Pumani were the brokers, we had ever been the students. I mean, we were, it was, it was bad times. We'd ask our money, our parents for two months test with money. They weren't going to give us anything, so we just had to make another plan. I knew Pumani had a scheme if he called me, and the first thing he said to me was, Cat. I was like, oh, cool, we've got a plan. He calls me and he's like, listen, I know where for us to make a lot of money very quickly, so I'm going to call this dude. He's like, there's a guy that buys charges, cell phone charges for five rand. Let's get all the charges you can get and let's have the best we can. I'm not joking, after about three hours, me and him walked to this guy in Mowbray with two bags each of charges between four houses that we deliver, we managed to collect. Get to this guy and he's like, the first thing this guy says to us, no, it's too much. <laughs> so we went back home starving, sitting, trying to find another scheme. You know, Pumani, as everyone has said, means a lot to everyone, but you know, I can literally stand here as a person who can deeply say that that man changed my life in many ways. Through his nature, his creativity, and through his schemes, when a long time ago, myself, Fuzzy Lerner, and a lot of us, Mark, we plenty had this plan, this big idea of creating this blog and creating this creative space for ourselves where we could all really present our voices. The real story behind that story is that this whole thing was, Plenty was worried about my love life and worried that I wasn't meeting girls. <laughs> so he created this thing, and through that, and I mean, it was just an idea that we played with, but through that, it was a way for him to express his writing, for us to talk about the world that we're living in. And I can tell you right now that I wouldn't have a career without that experience, without Pumlani driving that. So it's hard to talk about like a friend and a brother and also something so instrumental to who you are and realizing that he's gone. And I mean, for me, one thing I really will celebrate is witnessing this man go through the world building this complex tapestry of friendship and love creativity, building all these people together from the biggest jock to the artist person and creating this world together and leaving us all, all there, all there. I mean, he's, he's a part of everything we do, I feel. And I'm so, so grateful to have it. And just imparting to the Bokoli family, you guys have been my family for, for years and I'm so grateful that you guys loaned us this guy for so long. And I can speak on behalf of all the friends that we will pay that debt tenfold for the rest of our lives and we're really grateful and we love you all. Thank you, Andile. Thank you, Tani. Um, I love you both very much, and those words meant everything to all of us here. Um, we'd like to give Jongi Sizwe an opportunity, if he has arrived. Uh, Mr. Majola, are you here? No. Okay. Um, he has one more speaker <laughs> next, and then if he hasn't, unfortunately, we'll have to move on with the proceedings. Um, the last speaker on our program is uh, Luando Tasa. Is Luando here? Busino 
Nkungwini, Ekufeni, Puma Langa, Lulungesu, Mandingane, Enzeleni, Dilibona, Osengesu. I hope El Kula Nani will comfort you. To Pumlani, I call you my brother, teacher, friend. This was not supposed to be the setting. Maybe your 35th birthday or your 40th birthday. Maybe a lifetime achievement ceremony or a Hall of Fame ceremony. That's where I would have liked to honor your life, not your memorial. Your name in the same sentence as dead is just not believable to me. You entered my life at four years old. You and Solomzi came as a package deal. I have never known a time where you did not exist in this world together. I remember your cherub faces with cheeks so perfectly round. I remember your brightly colored corduroys. I remember those early years you spent mostly crying or just simply grumpy. It made seeing you smile that much more special. But mostly I remember how you and Sori always hung on to each other especially when you had to navigate unfamiliar spaces and unfamiliar people. You had each other, and I thought of myself as your older sister, not knowing that you had an older sister, Uzugiswa, who was in Port Elizabeth. But as soon as she joined us in Johannesburg, she became my best friend from the first day we met in 1992. Now we were a quartet. From sleepovers at your home in Malvern and Primrose and my home in Dikluf, every time you boys came over, my parents had to hurricane proof the house because we knew the havoc that was coming. So much so that I nicknamed you guys, Oh, what a mess. You taught me to surrender to fun, to disorder, and to mischief. I remember our weekend routines of Zugi and I preparing breakfast. No eggs or bananas for you because of your allergies. I remember us getting you bathed and dressed and begging you guys to clean your rooms. Watching Ninja Turtles followed by a long day of swimming and TV games. And I really enjoyed those moments where I got to beat you in Tekken 3. I remember the sing-alongs. Remember Lemon Tree, Solomzi, by Fool's Garden? I wonder how, I wonder why, yesterday you told me about the blue, blue sky and all that I can see is just a yellow lemon tree. We invented a game, we called it Eeropling, where I held you up in the sky and I helped you fly. All I ever wanted was your affection. Sulungo, your best friend, our other brother, was there for all the fun, a permanent fixture in our childhood. The three of you together ran circles around Zugi and I. Looking after you was a workout. It was at those times where I was like, perhaps being an only child is not a bad thing. Uzugiswa, a model for the perfect older sister. Putting your hunger before hers. You two are the anchors of her entire being, her heartbeat and the sun around which her world rotates. I am honored to have been a lifelong witness to your love and admiration for each other as siblings. It is a love that elevates all those who are fortunate to encounter it. Your parents did an incredible job. I witnessed you and Soli transition from toddlers to preteens to teenagers, and I was so, so relieved that I loved you even more as grown men. Our beautiful coming-of-age memories span the breadth of this country. From Johannesburg to Pretoria to Cape Town to Port Elizabeth. Spread over 29 rich years. I am ashamed to admit that some of these memories have started to blur. 
But what remains in sharp focus, Pumlani, is your character. You are very much Uncle Vusi and Uncle Gedi's son. Loving, thoughtful, and whole. And what I mean by whole is that you have integrity, Pumlani. Because there was only one version of you, regardless of whose company you were in. Whether it was my parents or me, we all had the same version. That's integrity, that's wholeness. What remains in focus is the freedom in which you lived your life. Daring us to be more free in our lives. You rebuked the mediocre. You had disdain for unquestioned traditions and conventions. You saw the world's lies for what they were, and you were determined to unshackle yourself and to do it your way. That was your superpower. This didn't mean that you did not seek the world's approval. You always wanted to know if you did well. This seemed to be your inner struggle how to exist freely in the world and how best to hold this world accountable. During, during COVID, I saw your anger at the systems of domination that affect our people. You never understood why we couldn't do better. As a child of the revolution, you had that spirit in you to fight for better. Most of all, I admire your radical acceptance of people for who they were. It made us all more free in your presence. In my shy days, you gave me the rap nickname, Al Weezy, which caught on because a lot of people call me Weezy. Every time someone calls me that, they will be inv invoking your spirit. You were the only one who could get me to dance in the street like everyone was watching and we didn't care. For years, we had been planning our epic dance-off on the Nelson Mandela Bridge to Man-Eater by Nelly Furtado. I guess I will have to settle for the sing-alongs we had to Celine Dion's My Heart Will Go On on a warm December night in Port Elizabeth. Those days were always perfect. I will forever sh cherish our cross-country road trip in 2009. Uninterrupted time, the four of us against our country's beautiful landscape. A country you learned how to love in your mother's womb. A country whose struggle you were conceived and born into. That struggle was part of your genetic code. It was inevitable that you would wrestle with South Africa and try to push it closer to the greatness you knew was possible. Even when you rooted for the old blacks, it was just tough love. I cannot believe that there will be no long conversations over our existential dilemmas. No more birthdays to celebrate, no book launches to attend, no plays, movie screenings, no more text messages sharing my pride at your latest achievement, no more road trips, no more hugs and funny faces. The last time I really, really hugged you, not a cursory hug, but the last time I held you, was December 2019 at Vuvu's funeral. A loss that reminded you of the loss of Vuvu's brother, Slunko, years earlier. We stood by her graveside, whiplashed. Why did this happen again? Today, I'm asking the same question. Why did this happen again? <laughs> that day, you cried on my shoulder, and I didn't know that it would be the last time I would hold you as I did, like when you were a toddler. Our last long phone call was last year, October. You must have sensed that I needed you. You called me out of the blue because you knew I was about to take a creative risk. I was unsure, and your call was right on time. You assured me my nerves and doubts were normal. You encouraged me to be proud of my work. And this time, like a big brother, you held my hand through a crisis of confidence. I checked our WhatsApp messages, and twice in the last couple of months, you asked me for lunch. We kept putting it off. Now it's one of my biggest regrets. I thought we had time. This is the end of your embodied life, and its end illuminates how you lived. That pouring of love is because of the love you gave to all of us. 
Thank you for liberating me inch by inch every time we were together. After each of our encounters, I walked away more myself. To the Bigoli family, my family. I'm going to steal the words of John O'Donoghue. Know that although Pumlani's days were brief, his spirit was alive, it was awake, and it was complete. I pray that with time, you will learn the acquaintance with the invisible form of our departed. That you will be able to enter the hearth in your soul where Pumlani awaits your return. In time, may Pumlani's spirit inspire you to enter each day with a generous and open heart to serve the core of courage and love until you see his face again. His legacy is safe in your hands. To Pumlani, thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving my parents. <laughs> they were always happy and laughing in your presence. I remember you came to my house and you saw this quote on my fridge that you loved so much. And it says, the only people for me are the mad ones. The, the ones who are mad to live, mad to talk, and mad to be saved. Desirous of everything, at the same time, the ones who never yawn or say a commonplace thing, but burn, 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 like the fabulous yellow Roman candles exploding like spiders across the stars, and in the middle, you see the blue center light pop, and everyone goes, ah, burn Pumlani, lala ngakolo Pumlani, Pumla Pumlani, supina supona chwaha. No, thank you so much for sharing those words. It's not easy. This brings us to the end of tonight's commemoration. Um, I would just like to take the opportunity once again to really extend a heartfelt thank you to the Bigolis for being so generous. Even in your loss, you shared Pumlani with us. And I think I speak for everyone here that it means the world to us. Um, I'm so grateful to have the space for all of us to be able to hold each other um, and send our brother off. We truly are grateful. We will close off with a closing prayer. Reverend Ndobo will give us a closing prayer. God, who is able to keep you from falling and to bring you faultless and joyful before his glorious presence. To the only wise God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority from all ages past and now and forever and ever. It's in Tigo, so mandla. We say, Unyan and Moya on well, Salinani and Gogo, good day, we say, Emma Pangatini. Amen.
apologies, apologies. Um, just one more item, uh, Mr. Klebu. 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 Apologies, Mr. Klebu. Um, there's some final announcements to make. Is is he available? Yeah. Yeah, he is. Coming there. Okay. Just uh, be patient. Phone is equally family, friends. Thank you for this opportunity. First, I also want to thank you for such a beautiful service. Mine is short and brief. It's just to announce that uh, the funeral is on Friday. The family will be gathering here at the house from 7 to receive from lunch from 7 to 8 the service. And then the next service will be uh, in church, which is Hatfield Christian Church, which is right here in uh, Newlands. Service will be starting at 9 o'clock with expected uh, time of finishing at uh, 11. And again, uh, with the understanding that we all know the rules and regulations, COVID regulation. We expect when people, when the service is done, we will all disperse because the family members will be coming back home. Thank you very much. <laughs> 